another young girl has been brutally murdered in an Airbnb after she met a man on Instagram. Not only was she killed, but she was beheaded and butchered and her body was disposed in a trash bag. The sad part is that when she left home to meet this man in this Airbnb, she told her parents that she was going to see a friend. Little did they know that she was going to a death trap. 20-year-old Rita Mweni Mwendo was said to be a student in the university. But at the time of this incident, around the 13th of January 2024, on a Saturday, it was believed that she was home with her parents. But prior to this time, it was said that she had been chatting with an unknown man on Instagram. And according to the police investigation, she had refused this man's advances on multiple occasions. But the man kept pushing. The man kept being soft on her, trying to convince her and persuade her for them to meet. It's not clear what exactly was used to lure her to meet this man in her apartment, but it is possible that she had developed some kind of friendship to the point of having some kind of interest in this man, strong enough for her to be willing to go and see him. It is not clear if money was involved or if money was used to lure her to see this man in the apartment. However, Rita believed that this man was genuine and believed that whatever it was, she most likely should be safe with him. Unfortunately, when she left home on the 13th of January to go and see this man after telling her family she was going to see a friend, no one would have expected what was about to happen to her. When this news first broke out, it was not clear who the victim was. What was said at the initial time was that an unidentified body was found at the trash bin area in an Airbnb located along Tika Road in Nairobi, Kenya. From what was said, it was believed that an unknown man had tried to book a room in this Airbnb. And this man, who was at the time of making this video, has not been identified. But it was believed that this man reached out to the Airbnb directors and managers and while trying to book, was requested to pay with his credit card or make a transfer. But he claimed he was unable to do any of this. And so he was directed to a nearby shop where he was supposed to make physical payments. But this was all in a bid to not be traced. So clearly this man had it all planned out because he knew what he was coming there to do. It wasn't something of instinct. The killing of this girl was pre-planned long before she came, probably long before they even started chatting. So after this man made this payment at a shop, which CCTV footage clearly, you know, captured him making this payment, he went on to register the room in a, in a fake name. So it's not clear if Rita went with him to make the payment. In the CCTV footage, there's a lady around him so that could be another stranger it is also possible that rita came later on after he had made payments there wasn't any cctv footage to show how you know him getting into the room and him leaving the room and you know whoever went into the room with him however after he booked the room the next day he returned the key to the reception and checked out after he had checked out the caretaker in the compound where the airbnb was situated contacted the Airbnb owner and told them that they saw a bulletin bag containing human body, body parts, downstairs near the trash bin. And they believed someone had been killed, obviously. They also saw a bedsheet that was bloodstained. It is also possible that they saw a blood trail that directed them, you know, from maybe the person bringing down the body. When this caretaker saw the body and got the owner, they followed the blood trail and the blood trail led to the Airbnb room where they opened it and upon looking at the room, it looked normal. It looked arranged. It did not look like where someone had been cut into pieces until they found blood stains by the door side and went to the bathroom where it was now very clear that it is possible that she, the victim, was killed in the bathroom with a saw. And I think that was where they figured out that the murder took place in that Airbnb house. Instantly, the owner called the police. When the police came, the owner was first arrested due to negligence because there was no CCTV footage available in the Airbnb as they should. And he was taken into custody and the girl's body was also evacuated. That was when they realized that the body was headless. So there was no way to identify her. It was believed a fingerprint was what was used to identify her. And prior to that, the family of this girl after she had been killed on the 15th of January, received a text message of somebody requesting a ransom of 500 Kenyan shillings for their daughter to be released. When the family got this text message from their daughter's phone, that was when they pretty much realized that their daughter Rita had been abducted and kidnapped and the 
kidnapper is requesting a ransom. They did not know that Rita had already been killed. It was when they reported to the police and the police had to inform them of the situation that they had found the day before of an unidentified body that was headless. That was when the family were able to connect the dots and realize that these people texting from Rita's phone requesting a ransom had already killed their daughter and had even gone with her head. So later on, Rita's identity was you know, announced to the public and she was confirmed to be the victim of the headless body that was found at an Airbnb. And throughout the police investigation, they were able to deduct and find that the killer reached out to her through Instagram and was chatting with her, making advances at her and trying to convince her to, for them to meet. It was also stated that many times they cancelled a few times that even Rita herself was ignoring this said man. But somehow, the man had water in his tongue and probably just know the right word to say to this young girl to convince her to come around. It is also possible that the killer lied to her that he was about to travel and maybe that would have forced or pushed her to quickly want to meet this said man who was toasting her and wanting to see her. So right now, the killer has not been found like we've already said, but the police have released CCTV footage of this believed killer and they are in search of him. At the time of making this video, they also said that three people have been arrested that they believe might fit the person who is in the CCTV footage. And I saw the picture of one of the persons arrested and I think that might just be the person. Because when you look at the CCTV footage, you will see a seemingly light-skinned man with a cap. And then the other person who was arrested happened to look like a light-skinned man. And in my opinion, if not for the glasses and the cap, I would guess that they are the same person. Now, a neighbor named George, where this incident happened, somebody who lived around the Airbnb, claimed that he recognized the killer from the CCTV footage, saying that the killer looked like someone he knows from an estate and that he usually rents cars to this said killer. Although the phone number used by the, the uh, suspect was traced to multiple neighborhoods at different times, but it wasn't exactly directly linked to anybody specifically. So the perpetrator was sure to use a phone number that could not be easily, instantly, directly traced to him. But regardless, I feel like that number can still implicate him, even though it's not registered in his name per se. Having to trace the number at different locations would also help the police understand where and where this person had been at different times. Now, one of the suspects was said to be caught, one of the three suspects that the police have already arrested that they believe is most likely the killer, was caught trying to leave the country at an airport. The person was found at an international airport and the person was also said to be from another country. And now this is where I think it is possible that that so-called light-skinned man might have been the one that is the killer because he doesn't look Kenyan and he most likely was the one trying to leave the country. And if you also remember, while this man was trying to get Rita on the chat on Instagram, he told Rita that he was about to leave the country. So if the police will arrest a suspect who was already leaving the country, it is most possible that that is the only way that they could find the suspect, the killer, per se. Although another suspect was said to have been caught with a Mozambique passport, but that's just about it. I personally feel is this international foreign, is this foreign man that is trying to leave the country. That might be the person, but we don't know all the face of the suspects. We only have one picture of one of the suspects, so it is possible that he might still not be him. But looking at the pictures, there is a lot of similarities. Now, the problem is a lot of people are of the opinion that Rita wasn't kidnapped or or abducted for the purpose of ransom. Now, remember we talked about the story of the Instagram influencer that was also killed weeks ago in this same situation in an Airbnb by a man she met on social media. That is Starlet Wahoo, who was stabbed multiple times by a man named John Matara. What we did not say about Starlet Wahoo's case in the previous video we made of her, or in the first, in that video we made of her, was that John actually also asked for a ransom from her family while she was with him, while the fight happened, and while, you know, he ended up stabbing her multiple times. So this Airbnb trapping girls and asking them to call for ransom or trying to rob from them seem to be consistent. It's almost like the Airbnb murder situation is what is on the rise now in uh, Nairobi. Although there have been just a few reported incidents, others who probably survived it and did not speak, or others who 
were probably never found or were killed so cleanly and perfectly that there was no trace back to make it to the headlines. It seems like it's a problem. And the police have urged a lot of these Airbnb owners and hotel owners to put up CCTV cameras in their establishments, which I think is important because thanks to the CCTV camera, we're able to see Talewa who go into the room with the said um, John. But for this girl's case, Rita, there was no CCTV footage to show Rita going into the Airbnb with whoever the killer was. However, gracefully, this CCTV footage of him going to pay, maybe it was important that he went to pay the money by himself. And thankfully, a CCTV footage caught him. Otherwise, it would have been very difficult to find out who he was, given that he used a fake name, a fake ID, and a totally different number. And that thing again that a lot of people are pointing out is the fact that Rita was decapitated. Her head was, you know, arrested, which is suspicious. People have the opinion that the killer did that just so that she could not be easily identified. Others believe that the killer did it for rituals. I personally, you see, when it comes to money rituals in Kenya, it's not a very widespread thing. If this had happened in Nigeria, yes, I can see it being money ritual. But Kenya, I don't know. They're not really about that life. Not as much or not as big as it is in some other African countries. And so it is very possible that the killer just did it. So it would be difficult for them to identify her. However, the only reason I would believe it was done for the purpose of ritual is because the ransom was requested after she had already been killed. So which meant that Rita was invited there just to be killed, which is why I can believe it's rituals. If for some reason, while she was there, they kept asking for ransom from her uh, family, I would have seen that, okay, they just did it so it would be difficult for her to be identified. But the fact that this killer already killed this girl, they also said that she was most likely medicated, that is drug, before she was even decapitated, which was proof because the neighbors did not hear a scream. I mean, you can't be stabbing and killing someone and nobody would hear her scream. So they believed they had drugged her and she was already unconscious when she was decapitated. And then with the saw, that to me feels like really, really, Rita was just invited there to be killed. And I, I cannot see why people would say this was money rituals because you're only calling for ransom after you already killed her. It's such an unfortunate situation. It's so sad and very tragic. I personally just feel bad for her. She's a 20-year-old girl. And this is my thing with people meeting people on Instagram. Kids and young people these days are really some of the biggest targets. Even mature people are some of the biggest targets because on the internet, you don't know who is who. Everybody seems so nice and everybody seems so genuine. When someone just keeps pushing, it's hard to not fall. If Rita had spoken to somebody about this guy, I'm sure she would have been discouraged or I'm sure she would have gone with a friend or I'm sure she would have chosen to see whoever this person is publicly first, even though that would not even change anything because they will lure you and make you feel comfortable and then do what they, ha what they have to do. Like we saw in the case of Stale Wahoo, who literally thought this was a reasonable guy and then they just turned out to be the most that they are. And honestly, to a lot of young people who might be watching our video on our channel, we've said this multiple times. Maybe many of us have forgotten. This is not the first time we are seeing young girls being victims of um, killers or ritual killers or bad intention people. And one thing that is consistent is whenever these girls or boys leave their home to go and see whoever they are seeing, to go and see their hookup, to go and see a stranger they met online, they are usually not honest with their parents obviously because they will be discouraged now the fact that when rita was leaving home and she told her family she was going to see a friend was what made her family allowed her go. she probably called the name of a friend and the family most likely thought that friend was there i personally if i was a parent i would have requested to know who this friend is call the friend speak to the friend and make sure that rita gets to that friend's house and i speak to that friend even though that would not change much, but at least it will reduce the scope of her tricks. And that is to just save her from herself. What happened to Rita is unfortunate, but the sad truth is more people might fall victim if we are not creating awareness. A lot of 
women and young people and anyone in general need to be careful who they meet online and need to be careful who where they meet these people because right now people are doing the worst people are doing the most and anyone could easily fall victim so guys let's be careful out there make sure you share this video to your young ones to young girls young boys people who may be prone to meeting people online it's important that we are all aware of what is happening and just as a reminder the killer has not yet been uh, officially announced i believe they've seen the killer from the three people that they've arrested so i guess the police are still trying to connect the dots and when they do We'll be happy to update you guys, so make sure you're subscribed, make sure you're following. Don't forget to like and comment your thoughts. And turn on notification button so whenever there is a new video, you'll be the first to get notified. Thank you guys for watching.